Can you all hear me? Yeah. Yeah, good, 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 good. Yeah. The summer of my sophomore year of high school, my brother, myself, and our best friend, Troy, were watching our way alphabetically through our local movie rental store when my life was temporarily changed forever. As you may have already surmised, we were attempting to watch every movie in the store because we were extremely popular and knew many, many women. <laughs> we all worked together at a local water park, and on our way home every evening we would stop and pick up the next five movies. And enough fast food to get us through another night of small town boredom and ditch weed munchies. We would sit up all night watching movie after movie, tripping on cold pills and wishing we didn't work at a place that made us wear short purple shorts and teal fanny packs. <laughs> Until morning came and the whole cycle started all over again. Lather, rinse, repeat. Wasn't high school really just fucking magical? About midway through the summer, we were working our way through the tease when we stumbled upon a movie simply entitled Teeth. <laughs> Teeth, excuse me, Teeth is a delightful coming of age romp about a young woman and her kooky discovery that she has rows of razor sharp teeth inside of her vagina. She discovers this while hanging out next to a waterfall when a boy tries to force sex on her and her vagina bites his dick off! Like clean off, dick is gone now. No more dick. As she frantically scrambles to safety, the boy bleeds out behind the waterfall spurts of gore ejaculating from his now appendageless groin. Nervous and confused, she heads to the doctor who, in typical doctor-like fashion, tells her that, yeah, that's just a thing that can happen sometimes. And he sends the young woman on her way. Empowered by the newly discovered ferocity of her lady bits, the young woman then embarks into the world on a kind of vaginalante crusade. <laughs> to find other rapey boys and bite their dicks off as well. It's non-stop fun for the whole family. As the final scene concluded and the picture faded down to black, my drug-addled brain attempted to come to grips with what I had just witnessed. I had just so many questions. Were there women out there in the world secretly luring men into bed, into bed so they could murder them with their fanged womanhood? Were they all looking for me specifically? <laughs> I assumed they must be. As if the moment I was born, the instinctual vaginae sense, like spidey sense, but four vaginas of every woman with vagina dentata, yeah, that's what they call it immediately pinged with my location and they had all just been tracking me ever since. I don't know why they would have all been looking for me to seduce me and then bite off my penis, but I was ardently convinced that they were. They moved in secret, I thought, like the Illuminati or the people who decide what items randomly disappear from the Taco Bell menu. <laughs> Thank you.
They could be anywhere. No vagina was safe. My raging hormones attempted to offer a rebuttal. That can't be an actual thing, said my desire to touch a naked woman one day. There would be men without dicks being found dead all over the world on a nearly daily basis, if it were. And besides, she was biting the dicks off of rapists, and you're not a rapist, so we're all good. My hormones were making some surprisingly, surprisingly logical points. My brain, however, was not ready to listen to reason. My legs were crossed so tightly they had both fallen asleep, and my genitals were trying to walk off the job without giving two weeks notice. Somewhere deep down, I knew this was one of those irrational fears people were telling me all the time that I fixated on. But I couldn't stop picturing myself trying to lose my virginity and instead losing my dick altogether. I figured I was just going to die a virgin with disproportionately muscular forearms. Is, is that why you always start with foreplay? Troy asked. So if she does have teeth, you'll feel them, and at, at, at worst, only lose a finger? <laughs> to be fair, Troy was extremely sheltered, and we were all raised in a traditional shame-based religion. I was pretty sure that wasn't why you started with foreplay, but I didn't really want to have that conversation with Troy right now. So instead, I said, yeah, Troy, that's what fingering's for. <laughs> Troy nodded what can only be described as the nod of a child who asked for a Nintendo 64 for Christmas, but instead received a copy of that book Snooky wrote. It's the kind of nod you nod when you finally realize that everything is kind of garbage and everyone dies alone. <laughs> so that's where we found ourselves one hot summer night my sophomore year. Three 16-year-old boys, freshly made terrified of all women everywhere, <laughs> sitting in absolute silence and trying to convince our junk that it was now just for show. You know, normal, healthy childhood stuff. Fast forward to a year later. My meteoric rise in popularity had continued on, thanks largely, largely to my anxiety disorder and inability to make friends. And I was now a member of the marching band. <laughs> Truly, I had arrived at the very pinnacle of existence. One evening, on the bus ride home from a competition, I found myself sitting next to a young woman from my same year. Let's call her Shelby, because that was her name. <laughs> Sneaking shots of vodka and participating in that sacred, ancient ritual of awkwardly groping each other. Buzzed on vodka and high on the adrenaline from taking third place at a regional band competition, <laughs> We fumbled and fondled with each other for about half an hour before she shoved one of my hands down her pants and the other up her shirt. I could not believe my luck. The band bus was like Tinder before we all had smartphones. Back then, you had to just fuck people you actually knew who were physically near you at the time. Fortunately for me, I knew Shelby. <laughs> and thanks to the band bus, we were physically near each other. <laughs> to my hormone-flooded, vodka-soaked brain, it was as if the entire cosmos had aligned to gift me with this one great moment. This was going to be my first real hands-on practicum in lady pleasuring. 
that I had done a lot of extensive research into the field and was doing a pretty decent job. But I just couldn't get that fucking movie out of my head. I was convinced that just behind, or more accurately, inside, this lovely feminine exterior was a deadly horror show just waiting to ruin my day. Maybe there was. I'll never know. Because, try as I might, I could never get up the nerve to find out. I just kept seeing that dude bleeding to death behind a waterfall. I decided to focus on exterior handwork and keep all of my fingers. I was going to be a famous writer, assassin, sign language enthusiast one day after all. How could I lose those, do those things with only eight fingers? Clearly, I could not. So it was decided then. The world needed me to keep all of my fingers. I needed me to keep my penis, and Shelby needed to be content with some clit work and nipple play. <laughs> so we both ended the evening a little less satisfied than we thought we would when it began. It's cool though, she grew up to marry a doctor, so a much richer and way better dressed boy is disappointing her sexually now. And as for me, Ten years and a few sexual partners later, I'm not afraid of vaginas anymore, which is great. <laughs> Although I am still terrified of the fact that babies sometimes emerge from them. From time to time, the irrational fear caused by that movie will pop back into my head. And when it does, I just stop, take a deep breath, and remind myself that's what fingerings 